Uh, obviously, we've got a big challenge this week. I, I think that Wyoming is, uh, after watching them on film for the last couple, three days, I think Wyoming's the best football team we have played so far this year. I mean, hopefully as we move on, we might play some equal to Wyoming or better. But Wyoming is by far the best football team we've played to this point. Uh, playing in Laramie is difficult. Uh, going on the road two weeks in a row is difficult. Uh, the motivation that they have is enormous. It's their last home game. It's senior day. Because they lost last week, they're 5-1 and one and tied for the, the Mountain Division of the Mountain West Conference. And they have the tiebreaker against the other team. So they can't afford to lose another one. So we're going to play against a very good team that's highly motivated and desperate to win. So it's going to be a very difficult situation. Altitude, cold, or wind? What's the bigger challenge, Larry? Uh, we talked about this earlier. Altitude makes no difference anymore because this game is on TV like most of them are. And they get plenty of rest time and plenty of timeouts. Uh, the CBS network, those timeouts seem to, or those uh, commercial breaks seem to be about three minutes long. And there's four or five of them a quarter, so altitude has no effect anymore. Uh, it will be cold by our standards, but the forecast, the long range forecast is uh, on Saturday sunny and 38 degrees or something in Laramie, Wyoming, that is not cold. That's a great day. Uh, the biggest factor of any game, in my opinion, is not not the wet or anything like that. Wind makes a huge difference to the outcome of a game. The wind's not supposed to be very high, so that that'd be good. But at times it blows very, very hard in Wyoming, and if it's blowing hard, it it changes the complexion of a game dramatically. Rocky, you mentioned all of the motivation for the Cowboys. How about for yourselves for this game? Well, our team wants to wants to win the conference championship, and I'm sure they're happy that we're back in the top 25, even though I told them it doesn't matter until the end of the season. So our motivation is that we want to win the rest of the games because there's a lot of good things that could happen after the season if we can win them all. Uh, we might get to play in the New Year's Day bowl game. We'd be the conference champions. There's, there's incentives out there. Uh, but the real incentive is they get to play another football game. Talk about Josh Allen, the quarterback, what he's done. Yeah, he's, he's a good player, really, really good player. Uh, he can throw it. He throws it very, very well. He can get out of trouble and throw it down the field. He's got two really good receivers that, in, uh, in our opinion, do the best job in our league of going up and getting the ball and taking it away from the defenders, even when they're, even when they're covered. Uh, uh, one of their receivers has been on the top ESPN top 10 two times for the unbelievable catches he's made. One of them last week, DB had him covered and he caught it with one hand around the DB. I saw it on ESPN. That, that wasn't fun for me to watch since I know we're playing against them. But. So he's done a great job. Quarterback's done a great job. Lucky, what's the kind of Yeah, that, that's an interesting question because I, I don't think it makes a difference, but we are used to playing at night. Right now we're very, very happy it's a 1230 game because we're in Laramie in November. So uh, no matter how cold it is, it, it's not near as cold as it would be at 730 at night. So I think we're happy about it. Uh, are, you, are you worried about John Barron with the wind being the biggest factor? I, I worry if the wind's going to blow. Right now, the, the wind is not predicted or forecasted to blow very hard, so it shouldn't make a difference. But in the mountain mountains, the, that could change in 24 hours. It would make a difference for both kickers. It would make a difference for our kickers. It would make a difference for their kickers, too. <clears throat> Uh, well, uh, since I've been in that climate a lot of my life, uh, going into the wind, you have to throw control passes. 
going with the wind, that's when the bombs come out. Uh, but if you're a quarterback that practices up there all the time, you obviously have an advantage over a quarterback that doesn't practice there all the time. Because to control the ball is different with the wind at your back as into your face. So I would say they still can throw it just fine if the wind's blowing because he has experience throwing up there in practice. The way the field is there, is it positioned in a way that the wind's always a certain way or does it swirl? Or? Uh, you know, I, I coached up there for five years, but it was a long, long time ago. I think the wind blows in all directions there. <laughs> what was it like living in that town and coaching in that town? It's a great football town. It's a great football state. They love football. The population is not very big. So it's the whole state. And it's the only four-year school in the state. So the whole state supports it. And when they have a year like they're having now, uh, which is a dramatic turnaround from the way they were predicted to be, uh, they get great fan support. And if the weather's good, it'll be a full house. How do they get kids to go there, Rocky? When you, when you, if you're recruiting against a San Diego State or, I don't, I don't think it, when we, when I was there, I didn't think it was that hard to recruit there, uh, because you get, you start recruiting and you can find out from uh, high school age kids whether they're interested in that kind of lifestyle or not. So actually, it was easier. Here in San Diego, everybody wants to take a trip to San Diego. So we don't have a clear-cut vision of whether they're truly interested or they're not truly interested. When you recruit for Wyoming, the kids that actually come on a visit, they are truly interested in going to Wyoming. And if you get in the same kind of climate or the same kind of neighborhood as Wyoming is, uh, kids enjoy that. And there's a lot of good football players out in those areas that they recruit from. And so it wasn't, it wasn't difficult at all. Bowles has a pretty good portfolio of flipping programs. You amazed he's been able to do with this quick considering it's a long time since Joe Tiller was there. I, I'm glad you brought that up because last year at this time when we played him, here we beat him, there was all kinds of grumbling about maybe he's not the right guy. And I said at the time that a guy that's won three national championships and won 100 and something games in his life, he knows how to coach. And guess what? Now they realize he knows how to coach. I mean, I think the turnaround is amazing. I think this is only his third year. The turnaround that quickly is, is pretty amazing. That shows you what kind of coach he is. He's a great coach. Uh, and he's in a place similar to where he came from, where he recruits the same kind of kids. He knows which kind of kids thrive in that kind of environment. And guess what? They play at a very high level. It's not shocking to me at all that they're that good. Rocky, these last two seasons, we've had all these games where there's a great running back that's going into the game. They've had a great season, and you guys shut them down. You, you did that with Hill last year. Um, you did that with Irvin last year. You've done it this season. What, why is that? Why are you guys able to shut some of these top running backs down when other teams aren't? The only, the only reason you're successful on a football field is players. Players making plays. That's that's the only reason, and and I think every 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 game and every year is a challenge. Uh, they're a much better football team this year than they were last year. They throw the ball much better this year than they did last year, which, which makes it more difficult to put people in position to stop the run because you got to worry about the pass. So just because you were able to do it last year does not mean you're able to do it this year. But every, every week's a challenge, so we'll see if we can slow them down. What, what about the way you manage your front guys contributes to you guys being able to stop good backs? No, I'd, I'd say it again, it's players. Players are able to take care of their assignment. There's two, there's two styles of defense. There's a gap control defense and there's a gap cancellation defense. And, about 50% of the people in the country run one and 50% run the other. And I've been told by TV that the best defense in the country is Alabama and they're a gap control defense. Well, we're a gap cancellation defense. <laughs> so. You mentioned seeing players on ESPN from Wyoming. One of your own guys had a feature this past weekend on College Game Day. Did you get to see DJ's piece? 
yeah, we got up early so we could watch it. How, how satisfying or gratifying is that as his coach to be able to see the kind of national recognition on, some, on such a big scale like that? Well, I, I, first of all, I think uh, DJ deserves that kind of recognition, and I think his teammates think he deserved that kind of recognition. So it's really nice to see a guy that has had that kind of success and as a team guy be recognized like that. And then him being on national on the national stage obviously helps the school and the program. So it's 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 a nice part of what's going on right now. The last time you were ranked, you did not play your your best game. I was waiting for that to be brought up. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, I think I know your answer, but I mean, I, is that a concern at all coming into this game, or you're able to put this out of your mind and just say, hey, we're going to play? Well, it seems like I repeat myself all the time, and that's old age, I guess. I don't have any concern with myself because I don't care. All I care about is winning games and winning conference championship, and if we do that, we'll be ranked at the end of the year. I don't care. It doesn't matter if I care or not. It matters how your team handles it, okay? And obviously, they know the situation. They know what happened the last time. They know all those things that's been told to them, that's been told to them what's important about playing and all those kind of things. This age group believes what they want to believe. I don't know how many times I've said that in this room. A hundred. Uh, uh, <laughs> but all you have to do is look at last weekend when three of the flop, top four teams in the country got beat by teams with losing records and tell me if this age group does not believe what they want to believe. So I think they're going to be fine. I think, I think they're going to come out, and I think they're going to play well, and I think we have a chance to win. I think they're going to be just fine, but I've been surprised before. Does altitude impact quarterback's ability to get it down the field throw it deeper? I, I think it adds a little something to it. I, I think just like kicking the ball, Kickers can kick it farther. I, I would guess a quarterback might throw it a, a yard or two farther. I, I think it takes a quarterback a little while to get used to it. So obviously the guy that practices there has an advantage over the guy that doesn't practice there. But, but we, will, we will have a walkthrough where he, we throw the ball around on Friday and obviously warm up. That, that should be enough to get used to any difference. The biggest, and I'm going to say it again, the biggest factor is if the wind blows hard. If the wind blows hard, it changes games dramatically. And obviously, they practice in it more than we do, so they would have an advantage. Does spread formation or hurry up or no huddle really give an advantage in altitude and a disadvantage to somebody coming from the sunshine? Well, I would, I would say that a spread team that snaps the ball every 15 to 18 seconds would have an advantage in high altitude because they practice in it all the time. They are not that kind of team. They're a team just like us. They've got a great tailback. They've got a huge offensive line. They actually put tight ends and fullbacks in the game. The quarterback actually gets under center most of the time. And they hand it to the tailback and they pound it. And then if you're really good at stopping the run, they use play action pass and a wide receiver is wide open and nobody's covering them. I mean, they're just like we are. I, I thought this last week it was really good. I, I thought that um, Christian was a little off at the beginning of the game because he had a couple open guys that he missed. And then for a, a streak there, he was really hot. And he put the ball right on the money. Now, a couple of those guys were wide open, but he put the ball right on the money. The back shoulder throw to Micah Holder for the touchdown, that, that was a great throw and a great catch by Micah getting, keeping his feet inbounds. So it shows that we can throw it. If we have to throw it, we can throw it. Now, I don't think we're going to win if we have to drop back 40 times and throw it all over the park. We're probably not going to win. That's not our style. But it's nice to know that we can throw it. How good is it to have Rashad be your second back, if you even call him that now? 
Well, I, I think that's the very – now, first of all, I think we're able to recruit really – there's a couple freshmen here that are really good running backs too. We're, because of the offense we run, we're able to recruit good running backs. Because good running backs want to go someplace they're going to be in the eye and get the ball 15 to 25 times a game. In the spread, they don't do that. The spread, they run nothing but zone plays, and they don't get the ball very often, and they don't get to run behind a fullback and a tight end and all those kind of guys. So we're able to recruit pretty good running backs. The best thing we do, and I think the offensive staff and Coach Horton in charge, the best thing they do is develop players and keep players fresh. Last year we had a thousand yard rusher too, besides DJ, right? Uh, so I think that the offensive staff does a great job of developing players and then getting them enough rest as well as enough repetitions to get pretty good at what they do. So Rashad's really a good running back in his own right. And I think the different styles between him and DJ really affect the defense. DJ's a real quick jump around, make you miss guy. And Rashad is kind of a slasher and break arm tackles and he gets out in the open, they can't catch him. So I think the two different styles really complement each other. Is that the impressive thing, Rocky, with him breaking tackles and then his burst kind of at the second level is, seems fairly strong for a guy his size? Well, I made this comparison to one of our coaches and Brian Hill at Wyoming and Rashad look like the same running back. They're both really big, strong guys that kind of wander over there. And when they see a hole, they burst through the hole in a straight line. They don't, they don't deviate by jumping around. And once they get in the secondary, they run so well, they don't look fast. But guess what? They're really fast because nobody runs them down. And Brian Hill at Wyoming is, looks just like Rashad on film. Once he gets out in the open, he doesn't look fast. But guess what? There's nobody catching him. So, yeah. Anything else for Coach Long? How did they lose to Vegas? You know, I have no idea. I, I think UNLV is playing good enough to beat anybody on a given day. And I'm not shocked or surprised at all that Vegas won. I am shocked at the score. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I... I would have, I mean, I would have, if I was a betting guy, I'd, I'd have lost a lot of money on that game. I would have said the game was going to be 32 to 28 or 32 to 24, something like that. Boy, I never, I mean, how's a game get this to be 69 to 66? And, and if you watch every other film of Wyoming, Wyoming plays really good defense. But they didn't on Saturday. But I just watched them again against the Boise. They played really good defense against Boise. I, I don't know how those games happen. I mean, when a couple, three weeks ago, Oklahoma and Texas Tech was 68 to 65 or something like that, something like that. I don't know how that happens. I hope it doesn't happen this week. You think you're going into the Hornets <laughs> nest considering all the intangible things and what just happened in Wyoming? I, I think that we, I think Wyoming is the best team that we've played to this point, and I think Wyoming will play their very best game this week.